So a new episode begins with a victory by the AI, not by me. Uh, Project Exodus has managed to unify Spain into the European Union and have also grabbed all three control points in the Benelux, uh, the combined country over there. So the EU is likely to continue to expand. Norway has also been grabbed by Exodus, even though they're currently cracked down. So this pan-European expansion that Exodus is doing seems to be going relatively well. Um... I'm happy with that. I hope that continues. They've got a good amount of boost, a good amount of mission control. This sets them up to be major contributors. And of course, their science income will be going up as well, which they're plowing into useful technologies. For our part, I got the US. We got the US humming. The US is humming now. Uh, it's not fixed, but everything. We got green across the board. Miltech, uh, everything, is, everything is smooth sailing from here. Um, the priorities are doing well. I won't adjust any of those any further right now, but I'm going to put less of a focus on Earth going forward because we're starting to transition into the stage of the game where two things happen. One, space becomes more important, so I will be spending more time talking about what is happening in space. As you can see, factions are already starting to set their stations up in low Earth orbit. Now, I should do that at some point. I'm just focusing on mines first um, because low Earth orbit slots are limited and you can see half of leo one slots are already filled and leo slots are really really valuable because that's where you get those sweet interface bonuses so i'm going to be focusing a little bit more on that um, i'm in a bit of an awkward position because i'm holding pakistan which is really useful strategically uh, given like it's a great country to help take over either china or india at some point but i'm nowhere near having the control points able to allow that while at the same time the country of pakistan itself not hugely productive economically, given the number of control points it takes. It's really a mili Pakistan is really a military power um, rather than a space one. That said, we should finish this spaceflight program relatively soon. We've got the country generally moving in the right direction. Um, I may even increase the emphasis on the spaceflight program just a bit, like that. Take it up to 40% uh, and get some boost to mission control out of this country. Although the problem with that is there's a genuine danger that if the country is involved in a nuclear war, if I don't um, make the targets prioritized properly by manipulating where armies go and stuff like that, I may lose all of it. So I'll finish the space flight program, but I'm not sure, not sure how much I'll continue to emphasize from there. The real, the real MC and boost hub is clearly going to be here in Israel. Um, and to a secondary extent, there's a lot of MC in the Eurasian Union. And as a quick note, my second mine is now launching towards Mars. Um, this is being made much cheaper by the fact that I have those resources coming in from the moon, which means I don't have to ship as much to Mars, which means the boost costs are lower. That combined with nuclear freighters means that by the end of 2025, my resource incomes in terms of space resources should start to expand relatively quickly. I'll soon be hunting for probably a third mining outpost on Mars. I really want to take a lot of ground there as quickly as possible, while at the same time enhancing probably the speed of MC investments on Earth to maximize opportunities. I'm really going to need a lot of MC. I'm also going to start uh, twisting technology towards getting space-based mission control. That's one of our next objectives. Speaking of things that the AI does that are not related to me, Iran has now tested a nuclear weapon. I bet no one saw that coming. This is actually the Protectorate doing this. Uh, and I think as a result, if we check the global menu, there we are. The Protectorate is now up to three atrocities. Um, this is not a win condition. You don't brag about this, except for maybe if you're the servants. We've racked up a couple just as a result of our wars. Uh, wars don't cause atrocities by default, but wars can fire events which generate atrocities. So just going to war can rack these up. And these are these are not great for diplomatic relations or public uh, or public relations, I believe. I'll have to get the details on that. But creating a nuclear weapon in a country that doesn't have one before, that adds an atrocity. So Iran now has a nuclear weapon. The Protectorate has nuclear weapons over here. That's not good. Um, ideally... What we would do at this point is find a way to coup the country, disarm the nuke, abandon it, and then let the protectorate start the investment chain all over again. But there you go. Um, Iran now has a nuclear weapon. Fantastic. And so it begins. Remember, this is technically a game about an alien invasion. Even if we have spent the first couple of years of game time doing nothing but squabbling with our fellow humans and trying to optimize a and militarize the global economy to enable us to fight an enemy that we know very little about. So Xenoforms have been detected in 
uh, this would be Nigeria, right? That flag? Uh, yeah, Nigeria. Great, I got the flag right. Um, they're thriving and are displacing the local uh, biota, which strangely does not seem to be resisting their advances to the degree we would expect. Okay, so what this means is that the aliens have started uh, xenoforming our planet, basically introducing alien flora and fauna in order to change the way uh, the ecosystem is constructed. And surprise, surprise, the protectorate is in control here, and I'm not sure they're going to do anything about that. Left alone, xenoforming expands, takes over, uh, damages the local economy. It does spread, it does get worse, and eventually, if you let it get to full, uh, full development, um, it spawns giant Godzilla monsters. Um, I'm not sure if I should put spoiler monsters around, uh, spoiler markers around messages like that, but it's a fairly early game discovery. So, alien life forms reaching their maximum level of evolution produces uh, megafauna, which can be pretty hard to deal with, like require the application of nuclear weapons or multiple armies in order to deal with. Notice I keep coming back to nuclear weapons. They really are both an Achilles heel for humans in that they're a gun pointed at you know humanity by humanity, so they're a great threat, but they're also a great crutch and while I don't understand the aliens' motivation fully, I do wonder if one of the reasons why they give us a bit of a wide berth and don't immediately start Zerg rushing Earth is because we have a bunch of artificial suns in ICBMs that can cause lots and lots of pain and suffering. So there we are. Xenoforming begun. What this means is uh, my newly renamed commando, Bard, Bard of Prey, after one of my long-serving patrons, is probably going to go and try and smash those Xenofauna, which he can do with a mission type. And I'm not posting everything that Exodus does, but my imp the fact that I'm impressed with Exodus and the EU continues. Um, this random event, Missile Test, also works for them. It's going to increase their miltech by 0.1, which is huge. At the start of the game, the US has, I think, a 0.2 miltech lead on the European Union. This will narrow that gap to about 0.1, so leaving the European Union only a little bit behind America in military technology. Although I'm investing a lot, and actually, no, I take that back. They're investing 22% in their military, so they might eventually catch up. I might have to increase spending, not that I'm competing with the EU as the US, but um, I would like to stay ahead. Anyway, uh, the EU expansion into a space and military superpower slowly, slowly continues. Okay, we have fired our coup in Iran, our coup in Iran rather, we'll consolidate control, disarm the nukes and bail out. This time I will bail out for real, I'm not gonna hang around unlike in Pakistan. Uh, so usually the tactic when you do things like this is just set 100% spoils temporarily to stop you being recouped, unless you plan a second coup. Consolidate, disarm the nukes, maybe disarm the military as well if you want to, and then bail out of the country. And now Exodus keeps trying to make this episode about them. They finished mission to Asteroids, uh, which includes the Hans Castillo, who's our main characters. Quote, if it isn't ours, it's someone else's. If it's someone else's, sooner or later they'll use it against us. That's why we have to take it whether we need it or not. Now, mission to asteroids is interesting because there's really two sort of mining strategies in terms of the early race. The moon is there to give everyone a bit of a leg up because it's so quick to get running and because it can be so efficient in terms of boost options if you get it early. Mars is a great all-round provider depending on how its resources generate. It's better than, for example, Mercury. In terms of raw resources, the asteroid belt probably contains a lot more potential output than any of them. Uh, they're relatively cheap to get to, so you can see here a prospector probe costs 0.5 boost, uh, and you can check the sites and get a rough estimate of what you're in for, and there's a lot of resources that are out here in the asteroid belt. The advantage is there's a lot of asteroids out there in the asteroid belt, and it's unlikely that other factions are going to be able to spend the time to go to your asteroid specifically and mess with you. The downside is... Um, the same advantage that is dispersion, the disadvantage is defending them um, with Mars, and we will do this probably. Locations like Mars or um, Mercury, they lend themselves to setting up a defensive fleet so you can hold that location against threats from either other human factions or potentially against the Xenos, depending on who you're playing. Um, asteroids don't really do that, or if they do, they lend themselves to a very different sort of ship. Um, a defensive ship around Mars, for example, that only ever goes to Mars is going to have very little delta V. It's not going to have much range. It's going to have a lot of thrust, and it's just going to be packed to the gills with as many weapons as you can pack on the thing. Ships that are designed to defend the asteroids are going to need more delta V to go around. They're going to need to make more trips, which means they're going to need to have higher performance engines and more fuel tanks. 
and maybe not as much emphasis on things like armor plating and weapon systems. They're just a different sort of ship because you can't possibly garrison every individual asteroid. In any case, we're not going after any individual asteroid. We're going after one in particular. I'm going to spend 0.5 boost to send a probe to Ceres. Ceres is famous from series like The Expanse, um, and it's important for one very big reason. It is almost guaranteed to have a crap ton of water and volatiles on it, particularly look at this sweet, sweet water. It's only got four mining locations, so there's not enough room for everyone. In fact, it's pretty easy to monopolize series. But if you want water, and you want a lot of water because that's where your propellant for most engine types comes from, there are a few engines that use fissiles as propellant, um, but water is the general propellant for most engine types. I think there's some that use others as well. Um, series is the place to get it. Series is absolutely the place to get it. The, the water incomes here, all of these ranges are higher than the highest income site on Mars, for example. And they absolutely smash anything that's on the moon. Like, I think the best water income I could potentially get from anywhere on the moon is like, what, nine? Yeah, I've got the 9.1 and 9.9 .9 sites, of which I'm only mining at the 9.1. So, yeah. Also, poor Korolev crater. Uh, Korolev is an amazing figure in the development of rocketry, but unfortunately his location here kind of sucks. It just produces uh, base metal, and even the AI knows that that is not a good deal. So everyone else is mining wherever they can, but no one is going to bother mining Korolev crater. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go out to Mars. We still don't have any competition on Mars, but I have enough in place to probably launch another base station at this point and claim another location. Um, so I'm looking for another general purpose one. I want good volatiles. I would like to grab these big water incomes as well, but I've just gra grabbed a, a 54.1, which is pretty good. I'm considering getting uh, this one here just for another strong across the board, some noble metals, some volatiles, some water, some base metals. Like this looks good to me. Uh, that's not as good. Oh, no, actually. No, it's not as good. I saw 1.5 on fizzles, and that's three. Yeah, there's some good. There's some good. This is a good rel. I think this is a good generation on Mars. This um, Arcadia Planitia is also one that you would like to get eventually, just to keep racking up this water income. Water and volatiles, all very, very good. But I kind of feel like grabbing some fizzles here. More base metals. We can sell this stuff for money if we need to. There we are. We'll rename those later, but we're now launching more and more locations. Once we get uh, industrialization of space and construction, which is finishing next month, so in about 30 days, we should be in a better position to accelerate those building efforts because what a construction module does, uh, to jump ahead, is once you build a construction module on a planet or in orbit of a planet or a body or whatever, instead of having a construction time of 235 days as you ship vital components in, for example, um, it goes down to like 30 days because you're using the facilities in situ to assemble the building. Um, so massively speeds things up. Once you have a construction module in place, you sort of, you're not colonizing so much as you live there. Um, at least that's how it feels. You expand much, much faster. And the tier two equivalent to the construction module is the nano factory because construction modules can't build tier two modules. Makes sense. All right, so here's how you disarm nukes. You use set policy when you control the executive. You go uh, disarm warheads, disarm nuclear weapons for Iran. Bang, down to zero nuclear barrages again. Easy as that. Um, we can now abandon nation, which will bring us back under our control point cap. Someone else can have it. Um, Iran, under the control of humanity first, has eliminated its nuclear weapon stockpile. And before you say that's a very non-humanity first thing to do, um, i just like to point out, I can't hold this nation, I can't control this nation. It's not that I'm against nuclear weapons. Humanity First really likes nuclear weapons. I just don't like it when other people have them. So, there you go. And the, oh, and by the way, we're at a fourth Mars base, so we're going to have to start adopting the Mars, uh, the orderly um, alphanumeric naming system for bases soon, just to get them under control. I really want to finish industrialization and get a construction depot out there, because it would speed things up a little bit. All right, here we go. Here's a major tech, industrialization of space. Uh, you're better off surrendering than sitting around your backsides, waiting for supplies from home. If you don't know how to use what you find in the field, you've lost before you even begin. Another great Hans Castillo quote. Um, okay, so this technology unlocks projects 
And that's all it does. Construction module, improve maintenance, devolve space command. These are all very good projects. And because we put the most into the tech, there's a reasonable chance that we're the first to get them. I'm not going to go mission to inner planets first because while inner planets is where I want to go, um, it's somewhere that I'm only going to go after I get the mining process started on Mars because uh, mission to inner planets is where we're going to go to get all of our mission control. So what I'm going to do, we're going to need orbitals at some point. Let me just check something here. We'll load the full tree. I think they're called command centers or operation centers. Command center. All right, what do we need? Oh wait, no, that's the tech. That's the tech three level. Uh, I think operation center. Okay, we need operation center. So what do we need for operation center? We need. Ah, I'll I'll find it. Basically, operation center is the module that you can put on your HABs. It's a T2 one that that gives you a mission control point. They're expensive in terms of money and power and all and upkeep and everything, but they do give you a way to accelerate your MC. Now, I'm told accelerating mission control, unlike in the demo, is now a little bit dangerous in that if you put too much MC into service, um, the aliens treat that as provocative. I think that's an excellent change, but I still want that unlock. There's a bunch of things I want right now, but I'm going to go search through the tech tree, even out the tech again. You get up to a, I found like a 20% boost to total output. Like you can see my science going up as I spread the technology out. Um, huge boost from distributing your science more evenly. So it's not worth um, deep diving one technology unless you really want something specific like I just did. Anyway, I'm going to go try and unlock a bunch of things. I need uh, T2 power generation, I need op centers, eventually I'm going to need um, technologies for another counselor, like there's a lot on my list, but what I really want to do is start getting the so-called Dyson sphere going around Mercury, something I didn't get to show off in the, in the demo, and something we will get to at some point this playthrough, I'm sure. Okay, that's the magic point we were all waiting for. Construction module has been complete. I did rush it. I don't normally rush technologies, but there you go. Um, all right, I don't want any of this, I don't think. In fact, none of this really matters to me right now. We'll pick up something like alien movements because it's useful. We'll dial this back to something like this. There we are. Ah, oh, protectorate's about to finish arrival domestic politics. That's vaguely useful. Anyway, the point now is we need to go to one of the bases on Mars that is going to have the potential to have spare power generation because the construction module eats 10 power. We're going to have to launch the construction module for 206 days. So we'll build it on Earth and launch it. 206 days and then we'll need another fission pile. 276 days, unfortunate. So um, in tw sometime in 2026 we'll get the construction model module going which means we can really scale up on Mars if we want to. Importantly, when we go to Mercury, we can fire a construction module out that way, and the same for Ceres. We can launch construction modules out in those directions um, and really improve the, the rate of our scale-up. Mission control will become the, the gate, the limiter, but we're working on ways to increase that as well. Now this 9 is deceptive. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 bases going and a mine, 9. But I'm actually going to be 10, 11, 12 once these bases finish their mining. So I just need to keep an eye on this so I don't go over. Also notice Exodus has made it to Mars. Good on them. Uh, I don't think they've started. They've started power generation. They haven't started a mine yet. But the location they've chosen is the one uh, with the highest fissile income that we haven't monopolized anywhere else. So Exodus is going to be the faction that can afford to make nuclear reactors, or at least afford to make them in space. They're also going to get some water, some volatiles, and some nobles. Okay, so they've picked a very balanced site. That's smart. That's probably the one I would pick if I was the AI. Um, so good work programming them. This gives them the maximum ability to explode out their... Um, their space expansion because those resources will compensate for the boost costs that would otherwise be in place. So we're not going to be able to fully monopolize Mars, uh, unlike in the demo, unfortunately. We can probably launch another location, but I'm considering, I'm seriously considering trying to monopolize Ceres. But this Mars is pretty good and I'm going to be here defending it anyway, so it might in fact be worth 
just putting more bases on Mars rather than trying to monopolize series, monopolize series and needing another um, needing another defense fleet. I'm not sure. That's a decision I will make in the future because for the moment all of our boost is going into getting these locations set up still. So Hiei base, Kosciuszko base. Kosciuszko base is building everything. Rainier base, building everything. So it's only one Mars location, I think, that is waiting on its mines. Great. Fantastic. Okay, so here's a little bit of an insider tip. Um, Devolve Space Command is one of those other projects that we unlocked at the same time as we unlock Construction Module. It's part of industrialization of space. You'll look at it and you'll be like, I'm not so sure, Devolve Space Command. There you go. It's 2,500. It's pretty expensive. And all it says is revolt events are less likely to affect us. We are better able to resist disruptions to mission control. You get a new org. You're like, oh, this line, we are better able to disrupt, uh, resist disruptions to our mission control. That line means everything. That line, there's a bunch of events in this game that can temporarily deeply suppress your mission control output and cause you problems. If you go over your mission control cap, suddenly it be, your stations become extremely vulnerable to result, uh, revolts or being taken over by enemy counselors who basically um, seize control politically as opposed to, like they use um, trickery on Earth. Essentially, you have to imagine, even though you control space stations directly as an organization, they're still probably tagged to national agencies or whatever. So seizing control of a space station probably represents some political and economic backhanded maneuvers. Devolved Space Command significantly reduces the impact of those events that diminish your mission control. So I will pick this up. It is expensive. Um, I could get Alien Origins instead to push the story forward, but I will pick up Alien Flora, Alien Movements, and I will pick up Devolved Space Command. See, sometimes events just suck. Uh, Arctic Methane Eruption is an example, and I think there's one particular member of the dev team that likes writing evil events. Uh, what this does is dumps a whole bunch of methane into the atmosphere. That accelerates global warming. Global warming is bad because it suppresses overall GDP. You won't notice it particularly bad at the start of the game, but unless you manage it in amongst the alien invasion, the politics and the war, um, it can become a bit of a drag on Earth GDP later on. We will pay a bunch of resources to get science out of this, even though uh, the ops is worth less but I just like science. Um, so there we are. Global temperature anomaly is plus 1.4 degrees. Now, uh, atmospheric carbon dioxide is still increasing year on year. That is unfortunate. Um, methane is increasing, is decreasing despite that recent event. That's good. That means we've started to get that under control. Nitrous oxide, unfortunately, is increasing. Zero stratospheric aerosol. So if we ever need to cool the planet, we can just launch nukes. Uh, but that tends to have other negative impacts on the economy for reasons. Um, the only way to get uh, atmospheric carbon dioxide trending negative year on year is to develop technologies. You want to cut the use of spoils worldwide. Spoils is a huge producer of greenhouse gases. Um, there's ways you can do it. You can green the earth, but you're usually focused on, you know, the apocalyptic battle for control and survival. So, you know, there we are. The other thing is we've now got 6.9 boost available. So I'll demonstrate a point. If we wanted to monopolize series, and I'm not sure if we want to monopolize series, I, I feel like investing more in Mars and defending just Mars, Earth, and Mercury as our trio of locations is probably makes more sense. But what you can do, because there's only four, is even though our, um, uh, our uh, probe isn't going to reach there for a while, we could launch a platform now. And on that platform, we could put a construction module which meant that when that arrived, we could then instantly build stuff on the planet. Um, this gives you a mild lead over other, uh, other factions that are looking to build on series. We sent a probe, it's a high-speed probe. Maybe not everyone has the high-speed probe, so that's a possibility. Um, and you can get a little bit of an advantage this way. But it is 6.4 boost, 434 days, so a, a significant period of time before this would pay off. I do think, seriously, that mining into Mars on a large scale and defending it will be better, but this is how you would do it if Ceres was part of your strategy. In this playthrough, I feel like there's enough Mars locations that have reasonable water income that I'm relatively comfortable just focusing on Mars. I'm going to save my boost. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, I'm going to save my boost to launch at Mercury as soon as Mission to the Inner Planets is done and also to start getting some interface... Um, 
satellites in Earth orbit because I need those interface bonuses. And as you can see, low Earth orbit is starting to fill up and you need at least one or two shipyards in LEO because they're going to be your orbital bombardment locations. Oh, great. There's a dangerous cloud of debris in LEO 1 too because someone got their station destroyed. Awesome. So LEO 2 is going to be the safer place to go for reasons. Uh, but you can see the other factions are starting to fill up Earth orbit far better than they did in previous builds. Okay, so I'm just playing a game of let's beat up the servants at the moment. And what I'm doing is I'm chain, I've located one of their councils. I've investigated him enough that I can now chain steal his organizations, which seems like a great thing. I'm looking for ones that boost economy and space mining output primarily. Although things like this research one are also good for putting on the, on Nero the second, because science increases the science output of a country if you are advising that country. So science output is good. But I'm mostly here, I think, for the money and the space mining. So there we are, hostile takeover. I also cooed the servants out of Myanmar. Let's grab another one of their pro-economy, pro-space output ones. What's that? 3% economy, 4% economy, 2% output, 2% output. So we want foxglove minerals. Great. So we just stole two more. Fantastic. We're going to try and grind up the mining bonus as far as it goes. Um, we took Myanmar because the servants had been putting like 100% of their investment into the, uh, the the Burmese space program. And as a result, there's now 0.42 boost um, per month generated in Myanmar for very, very few control points. So taking that country over will give us a decent additional boost income, which we're going to start using to launch orbitals soon because we're not going to need it as much to launch stuff into space. I'm waiting for my construction module to arrive on Mars before I really go ham, but I'm going to need a little bit of boost saved up to go to Mercury and to also start filling out LEO2 um, and other orbital slots from there. But there we are. We just beat up the servants, took some of their organizations, and we'll finish occupying Myanmar. It costs a grand total of 11 control points to hold the entire country in exchange for that sort of boost and whatever income, and we'll be able to spoil it for some money too uh, until we decide what to do with it. I think that's a fantastic deal. I might even put a mission control point here, but I'm worried I'll abandon the nation. So I think it's all about Israel all the time when it comes to MC. Israel is now up to four mission control production, which is only one behind what I actually get out of the Eurasian Union. There you go. Oh, and as for America, America is now at the sweet spot. Um, fantastic. America is now at the sweet spot of five, um, five cohesion. So America is now pretty perfect in that regard. We could even dial back the unity just slightly more um, in order to preserve that, not overshoot, but our, uh, Education level is now racing towards 9.6, 9.7, full democracy and on the climb. GDP growing, not hugely quickly, but I'm mostly focused on getting inequality down below three. And then we can just ham up the US economy and military expenditure. We're at 16% of GDP military spending. Those are rookie numbers. We can pump them up. We want America to have the best military on the planet. We want to hit tech level five. Uh, we want to get... Eventually, Nero the second, uh, sorry, Vincent R and Nero the second, who's doing the advisory job in the U.S. most of the time, his command levels one. After his admins at 20, we want to get his science and command up to 25 as well, because those also impact um, advisory bonuses when you're advising a nation. We should have the construction module going up on Mars relatively soon. I want my faction. Kosciuszko base, fission pile, construction module to be completed April 2026. So in a little over four months, we should get our construction module and then we can just go ham on accelerating construction on Mars, presuming other nations don't monopolize first. The resistance did grab another site. It's okay. It's got some noble medals and stuff. It's not the one I would have grabbed, but maybe they really need these nobles, which I don't because I've got a bunch of sites producing a crap ton of them once they come online. Uh, Olympus Mons, when it comes online, when's that? January. All right, so in a month and a bit, I'm gonna get my first outpost mining complex on Mars, and that's gonna just revolutionize my space economy. Like my, these things are gonna go through the roof. So look forward to that. Once that happens, that's probably where I'm gonna close this episode. And there you go, our first Martian base. Upon a red plane under a hazy sky, the base commander descended from the landing craft. 
as we take our first steps on our new world, Armstrong and Gagarin and all the rest are walking with us. 500 science, 200 influence, outpost core completed. And yes, of course, we're going to help the US with its wildfires. Um, now, the construction of the mine isn't finished. That's where we will finish this episode uh, because I want to see the jump in our outputs. But there we are. We have a base on Mars. Our boost income is up to five a month, roughly, which is pretty good. That's going to increase once we no longer have to pay maintenance on our HABs, which is excellent. I might also launch some other stuff into uh, orbit. I've started doing that, and once orbitals, uh, tier two orbitals become available, we'll be able to massively increase the efficiency there as well. I'm also doing advanced atomic manipulation. It's a good tech to unlock a bunch of other stuff. Um, I probably need to start getting some research boosters, so I may in fact actually help finish orbitals instead. Settlement HABs and orbitals will both finish early or mid 2026. That's relatively good timing. I'm a little bit nervous about the September 2026 timing on Devolve Space Command, but we can probably risk it. Exodus, you legends, I'm really rooting for you guys. The Czech Republic is now part of the EU. Go Exodus! And with the completion of the mining complex at the St. Elias base on Olympus Mons, I can't find the button to rename stations at the moment, otherwise I would you used to just be able to click on them when you're in... Uh, mode and change it but it doesn't appear that you can do that now anyway we now have this mining base going it produces monthly 11.9 water 35.9 volatiles 48.3 metals 16.1 nobles and 6.7 fissiles which means we are now positive on everything this is huge because when you're positive on everything and you can build up what you need to construct things, you don't have to boost the inputs from Earth. In particular, going positive on volatiles when we were negative, that's important. What we're going to do now, if I remember correctly, one of these bases has a construction module finishing in April. We're just going to build up a resource base until April, and then we're going to go construction mad. We're going to build Mars up to basically the limits of what our MC will allow. Um, and then our next step after Mars colonization is probably going to be preparation for um, setting up our mission control centers around Mercury, although we will keep an eye on what the aliens think as we're doing so. I have two stations in orbit of Earth just building uh, xenoscience labs to help us detect any xenos threats. I'll talk about those a bit later, but for the moment, uh, there we are. We are now positive on all resources, and I've already built up a 47% uh, boost to total mining income, and I intend to stack more. I keep stealing organizations that have mining bonuses, 4% here, 2% there, uh, from the servants, both to slow them down if they get into space, and also uh, in order to allow me to maximize my inputs from abroad. So what have we got here? Oh, this is, uh, we wanted to give her public campaign, so she could do that as well. There we are. She'll get that next cycle. And I'm also considering, as before, terrestrially, terrestrially I'm considering trying to break into China. Like, that is an option available to me. Um, throwing the protectorate out of India would be great. Like, it would be fantastic and far more affordable. Um, but in terms of practicality, I am considering breaking into China. That said, if I can kick the protectorate out of India... It's probably a really, really long shot. I'll start looking at some numbers and see whether or not maybe we can do it by driving, uh, maybe I can do a chain increase in unrest and then maybe a coup. But the um, the protectorate, unlike the servants, don't tend to ruin planets, uh, countries very, very badly. And they've actually got India looking... Look, it's, it's bad in some ways. They've damaged the overall economy and inequality but they've managed to get the knowledge output up a little bit, and the science income on India is actually really, really good. I mean, it's higher than the mini European Union that they have here. Obviously, nowhere near as high as the, the whole EU stuck together, but still significant. Um, now, I've managed to get the United States up to 729 science output, which is obviously better, but I wouldn't say no to that. And I might be able to afford... That's about a hundred control points. I reckon if I abandoned, if I abandoned Pakistan, I'd get thirty. There might be another ten here, forty. I've got ten here, fifty. I could probably find a way to make it work. If I put everything into it, controlling India might be possible. It's that or getting a few points in China. 
Anyway, I'm going to leave time rolling. I've just checked and seen that we're probably not over time for this episode yet, so I'm going to do a little bit more before I cut. Um, maybe as far as the construction module. We'll see as far as time goes. And we've advanced the story by completing the alien movements project. By studying residue found in the vicinity of alien sightings, we've established that rather than sweating liquids, these aliens dissipate heat in a manner similar to dry ice sublimating from solid to gas. Fortunately for us, during the peak of the global war on terror, most nations already used forward-looking infrared, so FLIR systems, to detect biological aerosol threats. By extending the quantities and capabilities of these systems, we will be able to detect the presence of this alien byproduct in real time. Allows the detection of alien operatives. So there we are. It wasn't easy, but we've managed to forge the beginnings of an alliance against the enemy. Over a dozen intelligence agencies and military power and military groups have agreed to cooperate against the aliens with more joining each week. A lot of these men were ones I would have shot at, a shot on sight a couple of years back. Now we're allies. Funny old world. Already placing observers in or taking control of communications companies and surveillance agencies at key points across the globe, the next time an alien shows up, we should be in position to properly welcome it to Earth. And there you go, a, a combination of a sensing system and handheld tablet to try and detect the telltale signs of alien presence. So we get a new objective, because we are humanity first. Kill an alien. Now that we can finally track the aliens, we can find some more, find out more about them. The best way to do that is to cut up a dead one. Try and keep it mostly intact. Detect an alien operative on Earth and conduct an assassinate mission against it. It's also possible assaulting alien installations on Earth may yield an alien body to study. So there you go. Very, very, very humanity first. Now I could go pick up a Nerva drive, which is a decent option for. Um, which is a decent option for building a ship, but at the moment I don't even have a shipyard. So I'm going to pick up, probably, I could pick up improved maintenance procedures, which is kind of kind of useful. A lot of these things are useful at this point. Uh, but I do think, if nothing else, space dock, let's get that done. So we can build ships if we need them. We have nothing to put on them yet, and nothing to do with them yet, but we can at least build them. How's Earth doing on orbital slots, by the way? Do I need to reserve any more? I think I'll do okay if I just grab the rest of LEO, but I don't want to waste all my MC on that. I want to build a little more to support that and have more room for mining on Mars. You are going to need so much water. Like, so much water. This is why Ceres is attractive, that, that there are more mining sites on Mars that I can get water from. That's where I'm going to try and get it from. You need so much much water. Anyway, I'll let time roll and I'll be back shortly. A probe of ours has now reached Ceres. There's one clear stand outside. It's this one here. Uh, you load a crater which produces 58.9 volatiles, 30 metals, 9.2 nobles and a little bit of fizzles for your trouble. The downside is how far out it is. Um, it's going to take a long time to arrive. If we start producing new facilities on Mars, by comparison. Come April, we're going to be able to stack a lot of these up faster. Um, so they're not going to be as productive, all else being equal, but they will get online a lot sooner. I am considering wasting one mission control point to go and claim a site out there, maybe sell off the ones on the moon that are less impressive, um, just in order to reserve that particular series slot but it is a little bit of an investment. Because um, if you do it, you want to send out the mine now as well. Although I may just send out a construction depot, because that'll only cost us one MC. And with our resources coming in, we can now, once the construction module finishes on Mars, start constructing stuff relatively quickly. So how much would it cost us? 541 days is a long, long, long time. It's entering a better transfer window, but still, that's a significant investment for admittedly a great return. I guess it also blocks other people off. But one, an MC point at this point is still very significant. This is basically me going back and forth on whether or not I want to monopolize series or whether I just want to go for other locations and not worry about series so much. Because then it's not just the investment in... 
it's not just the investment in the mission control for the actual stations, it's the investment for the mission control in the shipyard that you will need and the ships that you need to defend it. So as tempting as it would be, I think I'm going to stick to the Mars Mercury plan. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Yeah, I'm already so close. And that, that mission control point that's doing nothing for almost two years could easily be another station or half an extra station in Earth orbit giving all sorts of bonuses. So I'm going to do the discipline thing. I'm going to not do it. I might even start shedding bases on the moon, the ones that I'm not going to mine. There's one of them that I probably won't mine. Uh, I might sell it off to another faction. They'll really appreciate it. Uh, I'll be able to get some good stuff for it, and that'll cut an MC point down. I don't, in the end, probably want to defend the moon. The moon exists in order to get you resources so that you can expand on Mars, and that is where we are about a month away from being. And we're also going to get settlement HABs too, which again, that's going to demand MC because we're going to want to go to Tech 2 settlements, that and orbitals. So our demand for mission control is going to go through the roof at the same time as we don't have the capacity to build a bunch of it. So I am going to respectfully say no to series. Okay, game on. Hit the clock. 28 April 2026, a construction module has been finished on Mars. Stop the clock. Okay, so we have 14 of 20 MC used right now. I imagine that these three bases are still finishing mines. Let's go humanity first. Um, and we want just Mars location. So, okay, we only have one mine still being built. The others are building just the hab cores themselves. So we are going to hit 15. So we have five spare. We want to have two spare as soon as Mercury opens up, but that's not going to be for a while. We will have built more by then. Uh, oh, the construction module is not powered yet. How long until the Y? Uh, damn it. The construction module got there way sooner than the power generators did. That's a bugger. That is a real bugger. What we could have done... No, we couldn't have done that. Bugger, April, May, June, July. Okay, so we're actually still two and a half months away from being able to spam on Mars. Uh, the Academy has picked up an additional site. That's unfortunate, because what that construction module will do once it's powered is it will allow us to spam out control of the rest of Mars and to finish up the mining stations at our other bases. That's unfortunate. Okay, I thought the construction module would be finishing around the same time as the power generators did. It did not but it should allow us to go a bit nuts on our production on Mars. That said, our resource production is building up. This is a very good thing. Um, in particular, I want to get water and um, regular metals building up. The fissiles are also going to be useful. All of this is going to be useful except for maybe the bases. We won't burn through the base metals as fast as we're getting them. Water, volatiles, will definitely will. Um, we're currently doing Principles of Space Warfare. After Principles of Space Warfare, I actually think I'm going to go Mission to Inner Planets and because orbitals will be finishing. Around about the time that we finish Mission to Inner Planets, which unlocks Mercury, we should start having Tech 2 uh, facilities, which means we can shoot a construction module out that way and be very, very happy. Mercury is going to be one of the industrial centers of humanity. There are three, Earth, Mars, Mercury in the early game. As to why, I'll explain that when we get to Mercury, but the basic gist is this game follows the inverse square law when it comes to solar power, which means the closer you are to the sun, the better solar generators work. So if you go to Mercury, well, you get a lot of energy out of your solar collectors. And the upgraded mass on HAB modules to protect from radiation doesn't really matter necessarily um, because you'll be building in situ. So there's a four circles of orbit around Mercury, which lets you fit in uh, 32 stations, 32 stations, and there is nowhere else in the solar system that you will get cheaper, more efficient power generation. So if you want to build a whole bunch of facilities, Mercury is your planet. Venus is a reasonable second. The disadvantage is you don't get to mine anything on Venus the way you do on Mercury. You get some colonies for your effort, which means you can put a heck of a lot of economic infrastructure around Mercury and Mars, because Mars has a lot of sites and a huge number of orbits. 
uh, Mercury because it has such efficient power generation, and you can build a heck of an economic engine in the inner solar system, which you need to compete with the alien economic system being built in the outer solar system. Their system is much, much, much more technologically advanced, but they don't have the population or the industrial base to compete with Earth. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to be in an industrial race wherein we try and industrialize the inner solar system in order to compete with a more technologi technologically advanced power in the outer solar system. So I'll just let that turn roll through. I was very excited there. I thought for a moment that we'd be in instant construction, but we are in fact waiting for two extra months. Uh, well, I am making good progress on India. I'm building up a little bit of public opinion and more importantly, I'm pushing unrest up to 4.2 and I'm going to keep climbing it. If I get it to a, uh, a high enough point, combination of popular support and unrest, I should be able to send in um, everyone's favourite, Barter Prey, with his 20, soon to be 21 command stat in order to maybe launch a coup. So wish me luck on that one. I'm also building some uh, Xeno tracking stations in orbit. I'm gonna build the third one now, I think, because I'd like to find any alien operatives that are active and the extra detection bonuses from those stations are actually really significant. So I might actually found one more LEO2 platform there. These only cost one MC. And what we do is you just add a solar collector and two Xenology labs. And each of these gives a plus 10% uh, bonus on researching Xenotech, so big acceleration, and more importantly, a plus one bonus to alien detection on Earth to a maximum of nine. Not bad. Might even build another one, but for now I'm just trying to contain myself because I want to be ready to expand on Mars and Mercury when the time comes. Mission control continues to expand, but there's only so much Port Israel can do. That said, it's, it's producing them relatively quickly. Israel now has five mission control, which is the same as we're getting out of the Eurasian Union, and it's getting pretty close to what we get out of the US at six. But the US's job isn't to produce mission control. The US's job is to build itself up, and we're getting pretty, pretty optimized there. I'm also accelerating economic growth, and Miltech has now almost hit 4.7. I want to hit five, because at five, the, um, the picture on the armies changes. We move from the information age to the next age, which would be kind of cool. Oh, look, so there is an attack, uh, terrorism, alien terrorism in Canada, which suggests that the aliens are probably trying to flip one of these control points. How dare they? We want our friends, the resistance to rule. Also, the protectorate is using the India's overseas military expeditionary capability to invade Mexico and potentially take it away from the resistance. I would be very annoyed if that happens. I would want to time it so as soon as Mexico falls, the United States declares war on Mexico and counter invades because I don't want the protectorate setting up on my southern border. Anyway, back soon. Okay, so we're now at 5.1 unrest in India, which technically puts the country into the state of its. Hey, Exodus, nice. All right, now we've got Portugal. Looking nice on the growing EU. I'm not sure how they're going to get access to Germany. That would be a big win. But the natural next one would be to merge in the Benelux countries because that would bring the EU up to close to $8 trillion worth of GDP, which would not be bad. Exodus continue to be my... And they've got the southern Balkan states and they've got them in the EU. Not bad Exodus. I'm absolutely rooting for those guys. They are soft on the aliens because they don't really care about the aliens. They just want to run away. But I'm always happy when Exodus does well. They've never, they're never going to like be a threat or an issue, I don't think. Exodus, by the way, is one of the only factions, I think the only faction that can win the game, even if you're not playing them, but not cause everyone else to lose because their win condition is just them leaving the solar system, right? So that doesn't, that the war continues for everyone else. So there is no objection in my mind to Exodus doing well. Anyway, India is now in a state of an insurgency. Construction module is available in low Earth orbit. I'm going to disable that for the moment because we don't need it. So I'm just going to shut that down to save on upkeep. But there it is, available in orbit. We haven't finished our construction model on module on Mars yet, but we are going well. Lots of things happening. Lots of um, I've noticed that the AI is sending lots and lots of probes out to asteroids. 
lots and lots of probes out to asteroids. Now that's something I should con I could consider doing, but I'm not really in an asteroid sort of hunting business. Um, I could spend maybe five boost on doing the 10 most promising asteroids just to know what's there, but really my boost is um, going to go in reserve for the rush to Mercury, essentially. Now here's our free organization for completing that maintenance boosting project. As you can see, plus 6% spaceflight program research, plus three, three mission control, and plus five admin for no upkeep. So we equip this here. She now has spare upkeep capacity, which we can either put extra stuff on. I've also given our uh, celebrity criminal. So she's a secret, careless, megastar, affluent criminal, which means that she can start equipping criminal organizations if required. I'm not sure I want to go straight to like a syndicate. Um, we could purchase the Iris Syndicate, which would give her plus two espionage, and this, but this is generally not very good uh, unless she's got the underlying mission. So I think she's okay. Um, we could assign one of these unassigned. Gladiolus Metals seems okay. Plus 15 income, money, spoils. Like this is a good placeholder. This is, these are all good. Odysseus Interactive is also good. So let's equip that and let's unequip maybe one of the less impressive ones. Is it Astarte Laboratories? Plus 10, plus five. Yeah, that's, that's definitely the stronger one, but let's just check whether Nero the second, because I always like getting Nero the second's uh, research up. We could pull this mining organization off him. Now we need one other, maybe this one. Give him Odysseus Interactive, which increases America's science output by increasing his science. Then we go back to Miss Ray. Oh, and she doesn't count as having capacity for a bit because it'll take a while for Scipio and whatever to count. So we've got some unequipped orgs. We'll have to wait for someone else to level. Looks like you can. Great. So Nero, after all that, you're actually getting to keep this one. I'd like to get that 5% mining bonus back on someone. So let's go admin here. Done. Okay, so that's a bit of a rejuggle. It's giving us more and more capacity. We want to build up the capacity because my ambitions on India aren't changed. But there we are, we're at 21 mission control, much better position to expand onto Mercury or whatnot. I am seeing aliens move around and I'm not being able to do anything about it. So I am tempted to go yet another orbital station at the cost of one MC. We will be able to upgrade these to T2 soon, which will make them which is much more efficient than spamming T1s but we'll just build another solar collector to Xenology Labs, get the bonus to detecting aliens on Earth as high as possible because I want to find one and shoot one. Awesome. We'll close out this episode soon. I just, I just would like to finish on a bang with India. India or the mines on Mars. Okay, so here we are. We have the construction. We have, we have everything in place. We have everything in place. The servants did manage to grab one more site before we got there, but that's okay. So we want a couple of other locations. And you remember it was 285 days and a bunch of boost in order to get set up on Mars. Well, let's just say we want to set up on say, Argaia Planitia right now. Argaia Planitia, 30 days. Cost, one, one. Easy as that. We'll go to the respective bases. Want to, throw, want to throw a mining base up? That'll be 60 days. Throw a fission pile with it? That'll be 30 days. Let's go Mars. So we've gone 17, we'll be 18. So we can afford to build a couple more mines. Whoops. Let's go 19. Twenty. Did I just build a solar collector? No, I built a fission pile. 20. I figure we can go at least one more location. So let's pick something with good water and good outputs across the board. There's not as much metal here, but we're doing really, really well on metal. I'm liking the idea of getting an income of uh, 52.5 water. 
and some more volatiles. So let's go Promethea Terra, 30 days, 60 days to get that mine done. That does 10 power, that does 10 upkeep, bang. And that's the power of construction of construction modules. Once you've got them operational, you can expand like nuts uh, on the planet that you have a presence on. Now, what we'll need to do at some point, not right now, but once the aliens start to get a little bit antsy, is we'll need to build an orbital with a shipyard around Mars, because building a ship which can make the transit from Earth to Mars and still fight at the end, nah. I think the approach especially now that we can build stations in 30 days because we have a construction module there, is to build defense fleets in situ. One fleet to defend Earth, one fleet to defend Mars, and then once we go to Mercury, one fleet to defend Mercury. And that's my mid-game plan. Before expanding out into the asteroids, or the outer systems, or heaven forbid, Jupiter, like let's talk about all that in the future. Right now, the core of humanity first's economic engine is going to be the inner solar system, Mercury, Earth, Mars, with each of them having their own separate defense fleet. To that end, I have started researching missile warfare doctrine. Missile warfare is an interesting one. I think it's a fantastic crutch in the early game, but you probably need to diversify later on. Uh, missiles are a great way to overwhelm ships that don't have much armor. That's basically everything the aliens use in the early game and everything the AI, AI uses in the early game for the humans, because in the early game, like no one's expecting a fight, so no one's slabbing a whole bunch of armor on their ships, plus early armor technologies are absolutely god-awful. Counters to missiles come later, but at the start of the game, missiles have a bit of an advantage. So that's where I'm going to go first. You can't use them to bombard planets. They have very limited ammunition, so they're shit at going out and doing like long-range offensive actions where you can't resupply. But if you're defending a point target and you can just reload after every battle at a station, I think missile warfare is a strong opener. There's a case for lasers and, and magnetic weapons, but I'm going missiles first. We're doing advanced atomic manipulation to unlock a bunch of useful stuff, including armor, and we're pushing mission to the inner planets. I should start grabbing some research bonuses, but I think just running the resources up first is probably a good idea. All right, I think that is enough for one episode. We've done a bunch. We're on terrestrially on Earth, we're setting up for a campaign against India, which is the center of protectorate power. In Europe, the... Um, Project Exodus has increased the EU to a 5 CP nation by absorbing the southern Balkan states into the EU, and I suspect that the Benelux is next. After that, they'll have, they'll have uh, reduced their CP overhead again. Who knows where Exodus will go next? In terms of overall factions, if we look at relations at the moment, um, we are at peace with... We've got a non-aggression pact with the Resistance, the Academy, and Exodus. We have no relationship with... Um, the initiative, but they tolerate us. So if I find them, I might get a non-aggression pact with them. We are in conflict, so not outright war, but in conflict with the servants who are at war with the academy um, and with the initiative, and just in conflict with the others, including in conflict with the protectorate. In conflict means they won't really come and try and mess up your stuff, but you're not exactly friends. The protectorate, meanwhile, is at war with us and the resistance, probably because they're doing quite well. In terms of resources, here's the resource menu. Um, Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, the Protectorate has 305 um, capacity for CPs. That's, that's more than me. So they've somehow built up more governing capacity than I have. That's very impressive, actually. Um, meanwhile, the Resistance, the Initiative, the Servants, they're all over their caps slightly. The Academy is slightly under it. The Protectorate has 88 boost, so they have a plan that they're working towards. I don't know what it is, um, but they've got moderate income. Exodus has Exodus has excellent boost income. Exodus has boost income that is way above ours, despite not having major boost. They must have been... Okay, so Exodus is being Exodus and investing extremely heavily in boost. Um, in terms of science income, we're probably double most people, which is about right. We're much poorer than a lot of people. In particular, the initiative is sitting. The initiative in the academy is sitting on huge banks of money, um, which makes sense to me. Mission control capacity: we have 24 mission control. Resistance is 16. Servants are 17. Exodus is third. Like everyone's got the capacity to get into space. They're limited by boost. 
The interesting question here is what the protectorate is doing. The AI picks a priority and I don't know what they're decided to do that is causing them to wait uh, despite the fact they have mission control available. I will ask the devs that just to make sure that that's an intended behavior. Everyone else is behaving basically as I'd expect. 28.9 uh, suggests you're saving up to about 40 or 50, at which point the AI will launch a mining base to Mars. Like that makes perfect sense. If you see them stockpiling, that makes sense. Exodus and Servants have both recently launched new operations into space, so they're running low. But I, I, I do wonder what the Protectorate has planned. And I do wonder how they got 305 capacity. That's very impressive for the AI. Not bad. Well, if I find any high admin counselors of theirs, I'll have to assassinate them to bring that, that cap down. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed the episode. Back again soon.